Well, praise his holy and majestic name. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you know, it's been an exciting, exciting past few months. You know, here we are, we're in May already of 24, and God is moving mightily in our lives. God is doing so many mighty things in the body of Christ as a Christian. I'm talking about one that is desiring and ever increasing in their Christ likeness as, as we begin to put on the the, the principles of God in our lives, when we begin to look at Jesus Christ and we begin to now mirror and, and, and operate in his character, operate in his integrity, operate just literally being doers of the word of God, doing our best to, to choose and to live and to talk and to expect God to do what they promised. We look at Jesus and we see victory in motion. We see from the day he was born to the day he gave up his life to pay the price for our sins so that we could now be reconnected to God and then walk in the very benefits and the blessings of God, walking in the authority of God, walking in the power of God, just literally bringing our lives to a better place, creating a better reality for our lives, a better reality for our children a better reality for those people that we interact with on a regular basis. Your environment is so vitally important to God, and it should be an environment that accelerates the blessings of God, that accelerates the life and the nature of God expressing through our lives. So today, as we transition back, we're going to be talking about acceleration, but we're going to go back and just look at what faith and what expectation and what, you know, accelerating that faith and expectation that is geared toward the promises that you have found in the scriptures. If you're not going through your Bible and looking in your Bible as you're reading for the different promises that God has made for your reality, the different the different sacrifices that God has made, the instructions that God has given to change your reality, then you need to get busy. Because I'm going to tell you, every day I'm going through the scriptures, I'm reading for the promises, I'm searching for the promises, I'm searching for how to accelerate God's hand and God's power in our lives. You know, when we start talking about acceleration, we start talking about the power of God moving in our lives to change our reality. Your faith has got to be tuned up. You, you have to approach God with great faith. You say, when you talk about great faith, I mean, coming to an attitude, coming to a position where you choose to believe that if God said it, if the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit made promise and put it in the Bible, then they are able to bring it to reality. They are able to change your current reality. And, oh, sweet Jesus. And let me just say this here. Your current reality is undergoing change for the better because you've connected to God, because you've connected to God through Jesus Christ. Because of that, the Holy Spirit is active in your life, changing your reality. And I'm telling you right now, we want our realities to mirror Jesus's victorious position right now. Jesus is sitting on the throne, ruling and reigning. Jesus is on the throne right now, seated at the right hand of God the Father. And Jesus is praying for you, praying for me, that, that, that we would seek first the kingdom of God and their righteousness, so that everything that you desire in life that's righteous, that God has promised, will be added to your life. Joy, peace, healing, deliverance, prosperity, walking in a confidence, walking with, with, with the knowing that you're protected by God, that you're preserved to spend the rest of eternity fulfilling the will of God. That's what it means to be saved. And so now when we look at these promises that God has made, and we start praying to God to bring these promises to our reality, to change our reality. This is what this is all about, changing your current reality and causing it to align with the reality that God has promised. 
And again, that reality is preservation, protection, prosperity, healing, and deliverance. We're talking about a reality filled, your life, my life, filled, your environment, my environment, filled with peace, joy, fulfillment. All of these things are the promises of Almighty God. All of these things come as a result of our building great faith. It comes as a result of our building great expectation and releasing that expectation in God. That comes, and, and, and when we start looking at now, having life, having joy, having peace, having confidence, having boldness, having courage like Jesus, God is building that in our lives. God has promised that in our lives, and God is working that in our lives. And it happens because we've embraced the word of God. We've accepted the word of God. We have said to God, God, I'll go where you tell me to go to the best of my ability. I'll do what you tell me to do to the best of my ability. I will say what you tell me to say to the best of my ability. In other words, God, I want your reality. I want your blessings. I want your life. I, I want to. I want to live my life. I want to I want to wake up tomorrow knowing that my reality is changing for the better. That's a great desire. That's your desire. That's my desire. Oh my god, tomorrow I want my reality to begin to look more like your promises. I want my reality, my family's reality, my friends' reality, my enemies' reality to look more like your promises. Now you can't force other people to accept God's reality. But what you can do is you can be a witness of God's reality, of God's ability to take your life, to take your thinking, to take your spiritual output, to take your physical performance in life, and now cause their promises to manifest through your life. Now, we want to figure out how to accelerate that reality, how to create in our everyday life the things that will cause God's power to be able to move in a swifter, in a more rapid pace to change our realities, to align with God's promises. Oh, hallelujah. And now you talk about being a witness for God. You're talking about being able to now say to your friends, say to your family, the reason why I'm blessed is because God is changing my reality, your career, whatever you put your hands to. God says, I want to accelerate your current reality to look like and to fulfill all of the promises I've made to you, specifically you. God is saying this to all of humanity. And then we get to be, we get to be, we get a chance to be a witness of all of the prayers God is answering, all the miracles God is doing in our lives, all the miracles that God is doing for those that we're praying for. Hallelujah. You talk about witnessing, you're talking about being that voice that, that talks about the overcoming power of God, that talks about the very the very victory of God, the very ability of God to get us through some of the most challenging of times. And we want to now not only walk and release our faith, walk and release our expectations in God's promises and abilities, but we want to now tap into those things, those things specifically that accelerate the movement of God in our lives. You want to absolutely tap into all the things that break Satan's power, that disrupts his attack patterns. You see, when you get close to God and then the devil be coming at you hard, you want to be in a position to where you release such an onslaught of faith and praise and rebuke and, and, and commandment commanding Satan in Jesus' name, 
you want to release such a, a whirlwind of the word of God as Satan, like Jesus did in Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4, where you start resisting and rebuking Satan so much so that he now gets hit by the authority in the name of Jesus coming out of your mouth, that he gets hit by the scriptures that you've been studying and learning, those promises of victory over Satan. When you speak that and rebuke that devil, oh, good God, and when you see him flee, when you see God's power accelerate to such a, a, a level of intensity that Satan now flees from you, that your circumstances that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy turn around and turn around with acceleration. Oh, God. Ooh. I'm going to tell you right now, it's one thing to get God to answer your prayers. It's a whole nother thing to get God to do it swiftly in an accelerated fashion. Mm. You say, is that possible? Yes. We're going to look at today, first of all, what acceleration is. And you know you have your idea. We're going to look at it from a biblical standpoint. And then we're going to look at the things that you can do, that I can do, that we can do to accelerate the movement of God in our life in our circumstances, in our situations, to change our reality, to align with God's promise. The series, we've been on this series for a while. We're back to it. We're, we're halfway through it. So if you really want to understand where we are, you're going to have to go back and, and look at some of the past teachings up on YouTube. But now, but now, we're talking about faith, expectation, acceleration of our reality change through the power of God, through the promises of God. So now, when we start talking about acceleration, all right, wait, wait, wait. Before we go to acceleration, there's going to be some things that you're going to have to do and get built up in and learn how to wreck Satan's kingdom, how to wreck Satan's environment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this here. <laughs> You, you could see when that devil come at you, right? And we ain't going to be on him for a whole minute. We're going to be on him for about 30 seconds because we got other things that we're going to do. We want to learn how to accelerate the power of God moving in our situation. We're going to talk about praise, the power of praise. We're going to talk about the power of prayer. Oh, sweet Jesus, man. We're going to talk about how those two components, they just literally amp up your faith in God, your movement in God, it amps up your connection in God, it amps up your love for God, it amps up your willingness to do for God, to, to, to work for God, and then that triggers a response from God that's like, because if you're going to do all those things for God, then God's got to, he's got to empower you. I mean, if you say, okay, God, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you, I'm going to do that for you, and then you find out what God's word says, well, then God's got to turn up the power. But God can turn up the power when you learn how to rebuke Satan. Now, when you learn who you are, and, and then you and you'd be like, I'm Satan, you you done. And you look at God, you say, God, I, I'm gonna be praying more, I'm gonna be fellowshipping more with you. So let's look at we're gonna talk about now. We're talking about accelerating the power of God, how to accelerate God's power to bring their promises to reality in your life. So we're talking about reality change, okay? So now watch this here. First of all, how to wreck Satan's environment. Because see, we all have environments. You have an environment. And we dealt with that before we got here. Uh, you wanna protect your environment. You wanna put things in your environment that's gonna grow and be, be uh, things that God can look at your life and see the environmental changes that you've made in your life, adding to your life the things of God so that God can accelerate movement in and through your life. But but we want to wreck Satan's environment, and then we'll build on that. Let's lose it. If you want to wreck Satan's environment, this is what you got to do, okay? You got to work on your witnessing and your worship to God. You're witnessing for God and your worship to God. Then you got to work on your warfare, 
You got to work on fighting that enemy, rebuking him, resisting him, and breaking his power by commanding him to, to, to stop and to commanding him to flee in Jesus' name. Commanding all the stuff that he's doing against you to die, to become ineffective against your life, and against your family, and against your friends, and even against your enemies. Look at this here. You're going to have to work on your wisdom. Now, wisdom is the ability to take the knowledge of God and put it into practical application in your life. We all got to do that. I'm doing that. Listen, what I say to you, I'm doing this. You know, for some of you, I've sent out the eight positions in prayer, and I just sent those out to you because I've mastered them now. I do those every time I pray, uh, especially in my devotional, I'm going through those eight positions. And, and then there's eight things that I'm praying specifically to God for you, for myself, for my fellow man. And there's, there's eight different prayers that I'm praying uh, uh, as I make those positional changes. And as I'm making those positional changes, I'm praying these prayers. And so for the past two months, I, I've now got those prayers perfected to the point that when I change position, I'm already praying what I should be praying in that position. When I go to position two, I already have what I'm praying. It's already laid out. I don't work out all of the books. So now my prayer time is increasing. My prayer time is creating such a, such a love. It's just, it's just amplified. My love for God It's amplified my desire to work for God. And it's going to do the same thing for you. I'm going to send this to you today. If you request it. But it's going to be awesome. It's just amazing. So when you when you begin to put things in your environment to accelerate the movement and the power of God in your life, all of a sudden now you change, you see things different, you see things from a, a, a vantage point of a conqueror, you see things from the vantage point of, of a victor and not a victim, you now start getting God's promises and you start releasing your faith in those promises, Satan is like, oh no, I've lost control of them. Oh, they're yielding more to God. What am I going to do? Flee! You know what I mean? I mean, this is what you, listen, you're going to start seeing Satan flee from you because you keep growing in God. You keep learning how to wow that devil. Ooh, just like Jesus did. Every day, Jesus, man, Jesus made that devil run. Every time that devil would attack, Jesus would attack back, and that and that devil would run. And that is what's happening in your life. That's what's happening in my life. We're, we're, we're standing against him, and we're making him flee. We're standing against him with the word of God, quoting the word of God, believing the word of God in Jesus' name, and we're bold and courageous. We're telling that devil and commanding him be gone. And he has to flee. So we're going to work on not only our, our witnessing and work on not only our worshiping of God now, witnessing for God, work on our warfare for God and in God, work on our wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to put the knowledge of God into operation. So now we're doing the word of God. We're, we're manifesting the power of God. Now, when, when, when stuff jump off, and you know Satan's causing it, you rebuking him and resisting him in Jesus' name, and you commanding him to flee. You're commanding his attack to die. You're commanding him to stop, and now you're commanding him to flee, and guess what he's going to do? He's going to flee in Jesus' name. You just got to keep resisting him until he does. Ooh, hallelujah. It's like hammering a nail. Unless you have one of them guns that, and it goes all the way in. But if you're using the old-fashioned hammer, you got to align that nail, got to put it in the spot that you want to, you know, hit it into, and bam, bam. So that thing is all the way in. I don't know how many, I don't know how much force your connection and your knowledge of God and your skills and ability in God has grown to. There's some people, you know, there's some carpenters. One, two, three, that nail is in. But if, if but if you if you're not skillful at that, you may bend the nail, straighten it back out. You, you may hit that nail, you may have to hit it in there 10 times, but it doesn't matter. Because guess what? You're gonna get that nail in the hole and you're gonna make that devil flee. Just keep hitting him with the word, 
hitting them with the hammer of God's word. You know, the Bible says the word of God is like a hammer, breaks the rocks into pieces. Yes. And you are equipped. You are accelerating in your growth. You're accelerating in your wisdom. You're accelerating and wowing that devil. Look at this here. You have to work on wavering. You got to work on wavering because when 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 you waver, if you waver, trust in God, you're just under attack. Satan's just hitting you with doubt and unbelief, try to get you to, to, to start, you know, shaking and wondering whether or not God's got you because the heat of the battle may have increased. That's why we're going to learn how to accelerate the power of God moving in our lives. All right. Stick with me. You got to work on wandering. You know, because that devil will try to get you off on a tangent. He'll try to get you off into some things that that's not even productive for your life. That's not even productive for your growth in the things of God. And let me tell you something. You know, as you get older, you'll be like, I ain't got time to waste. So as we're getting older in the things of God, as we're getting older in life, we God give me the formula so that I can see immediate results. I mean, immediate results means God has accelerated their power to change your reality. And I need, I need acceleration. You know, I'm a NASCAR guy. I like driving. I really like driving fast. That's acceleration. You want to pray the promise of God, and you want to do those things that accelerate the movement of God to bring your reality change to bring that answer to prayer. But now, if you're going to have God accelerate in your life, you got to have some specific things that you are believing God to do in your life. That means you got to go to the word of God and find the promises that God has already made. Let me hit you with salvation again. God has promised to preserve your life for eternity, to spend the rest of eternity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, fulfilling the rest of their plan. The God, the God that we serve, the deity that we serve, the divinity that we serve, I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have promised to protect you from hurt, harm, and danger here on planet Earth and for the rest of eternity. The God that we serve has promised to prosper you here on planet Earth and for the rest of eternity. The God that we serve, our Elohim, has promised to give you health and keep you healthy here and for the rest of eternity. I'm talking salvation right now. Our Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, our deity has promised through the Bible to deliver us from every addiction, every addictive thing that Satan has put in front of us and tempted us. And some have gotten involved in some of these addictions. God says, I, I have given you the power to be delivered from them things. Those things will not dominate you. And when I say addictive things, I'm not just talking drugs and alcohol and pornography, but worry and fear and anxiety. These things, you can be addicted to these things. Laziness, procrastination. Those addictions got to be broken. Those attacks from the enemy have to be broken. And they have been broken. But you and I, we got to walk free consistently from those things. And we can by accelerating the power of God to keep us in a mindset, in a place where we're wowing, wrecking Satan's kingdom. Oh, sweet Jesus. We wrecking Satan's environment. When he comes at you trying to control you and you open up with some praise and prayer and some willingness and obedience, and then you start telling other folks about how God has given you victory and how God can give them victory. Satan's environment is wrecked. All right, I'm going to try to calm down. I'm going to tell you right now. All right, I can't calm down on this one. I love wrecking his environment. I'm talking about Satan right now. I love wrecking Satan's environment. Anything goes wrong in my life, I'm going out to wreck his environment. I, okay, guess what? I don't know how I did it. I don't know where I did it, but... Somehow, some way, I rolled over a screw and it got in my tire. And when I took it to the people, they said, we can't repair this. You have to buy a new one. Okay. 
Oh, I went out and wrecked Satan's environment. I was like, I was hot. I was like, man. I went out, I talked to like about seven or eight people, just talked to them on a random about Jesus. Just told them, Jesus loves you. God bless you. Okay. Look at this here. You, you got to work on your wandering. You can't be wandering. You can't be vacillating. So you got to work on that. Then you got to work on weakness. You, you know what I mean? Because Satan loves it when we wander and we're weak and we're confused. He loves that. But we taking that from him. We're working on that. We're getting strong in the Lord, stable in the Lord, stable in the Lord. We're getting consistent in the things of God. And I see your consistency. You are getting more consistent and you are getting more persistent with God. You are literally getting stronger in God. Your connection is growing and getting stronger. Satan don't like that. But he can't stop that. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. And God. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They love it. Oh, shucks. All right. You know what? I'm minding my business trying to preach this message. And I hear this verse. I haven't heard this verse in 40-something years. I love it when you call me Big Papa. It just came into my head. I'm here preaching. That devil's a mean devil. But you got to take what he's doing and flip it. And the Father God loves it when you call him Daddy. The Lord Jesus loves it when you call him Lord Jesus. The Holy Ghost loves it when you call him the big comforter. So I say, I flip that. That devil is a liar. We wow in his kingdom. You are wow in his kingdom. You got to just learn how to release your praise, release your faith. You got to learn how to release that prayer time with intimacy and devotion to God. You got to learn how to, in the midst of a, a battle, to Turn the environment into your favor, God's favor, the people that you're dealing with's favor. I'm telling you, even your enemies, your enemies coming at you with some rah, rah, rah. You got to look at them and put that word of God on them. You got to put the answer to the problem. You got to put that peace on. You got to release that. And then you got to rebuke Satan right in the middle of that conversation. Rebuke Satan right in the middle of that conflict. The minute you say, Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And then you start praying. Lord, I thank you right now. The conflict between me and so-and-so, I thank you that right now this is not going to go and grow. But, Lord God, we thank you for peace right now in Jesus' name. Now, what were you talking about? This is what you're going to say to your enemy. What were you saying? Why are we here? You got to know how to work the wisdom of God. Oh, oh sweet Jesus. You got to work on that worrying. You got to work on waiting for God, trusting God. How do you wait on God? You wait on God by being busy. You don't just sit back and do nothing. You got to get busy. And when that devil comes to try to attack you for getting busy for God, you got to attack him back. Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at this here. All right. I, I want to jump down to accelerate. All right. And, and this is so important because this is what we're doing. We're accelerating the power of God in our environment. Listen, your environment, you got to protect your environment. You got to protect your internal peace, your internal joy. You got to you got to protect your internal uh, faith and expectations in God. You, you got to protect not only your internal. This is you now. You got to protect your external environment. You got to you got to now create things in your external environment that 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 bring peace and joy and bring the knowledge of God and 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 that helps people tap into the peace of God oh sweet Jesus now it, 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 I want to just deal with this real quick okay some positive things that you need in your environment and some positive things that when you look in your immediate environment I'm talking beyond now beyond just your internal environment, but your immediate environment, that, that's, that's your home, that's at your job, that's at the place where you recreate, wherever you go, wherever you spend quality time in, you want to see if you can get these things flowing in that environment. Things like knowledge of godly solutions. Yeah, this is important to have in your environment, the knowledge of God to bring solutions, to bring the answer to fix things that get broken in your environment, things that have been broken in your environment as a result of warfare with Satan. Uh, you want to deal with the, the in your environment, you want to have and be able to recognize godly faith. And that's what we're talking about, faith, expectation. We're talking about acceleration and then creating a reality change that is sustainable, 
that is enjoyable, but it's going to take some work now. It's going to take some effort. You're going to have to do your part. I got to do my part. And then God can do their part. Okay. Uh, the knowledge of godly work ethic. You, you see what I'm saying? When, when, when your work ethic is based on, I'm doing this for God first. I'm doing it for me second. And then I'm doing it for the place that I work for third. See, and that's the proper order. And then you got to be able to, to be able to look at in your in your environment and have and recognize the, the knowledge of godly peace, how to get the peace of God, not just in your internal environment, in you, but get the peace of God in your external environment. So now you at peace, you can be in a place that's crazy and rowdy for the devil, but you at peace. You can be in a place that's hostile, but you're at peace. You know, Isaiah still says, those that keep their mind stayed on me, I will keep them not only in, in internal peace, but that peace can now impact your external environment. That's what we're learning how to do. So that when we walk in the situation, when we open up with the word of God, when we open up after all that praying and all that praising, when we speak, God's power goes to work and 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 literally conform our environments in an accelerated way. And that's whether other people are creating conflict, the situation is a conflict, we come in there with the answer of peace, the answer of joy, the answer of God, the answer of victory. And we're going to come in there with such wisdom when we reason with folk they going to get it because we're going to break it down so simple that all they got to do now is either choose to allow God to accelerate their reality into that situation that is, you know what I mean, hostile and negative and, and satanically charged. We got the authority to make this cat flee because we wrecking his environment. Look at this here. And then not, in your environment, you got to have the knowledge of godly joy, the things that create godly joy, the things that that record godly prayers and interventions in your life. Oh, yeah. You know, so when you look in your environment, you, you got to have things in place, things that you can do that release the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. So now, Matthew 4.4, I'm going to just throw this out real quick. But now this is in the midst of Jesus battling with Satan. Satan going to come at him and say, you know, if you really, you know what I mean? The chosen one of God, you really, if you, if you the real Emmanuel, God manifested in the flesh, if you the real son of God, turn these bread, I mean, these stones into bread. Look at this here. And he answered and said, it is written. This is Jesus answering that devil. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, when Satan comes attacking, if you're going to wreck his environment, you're only going to do that with the word of God. Because you now recognize these things that you've allowed to grow in your personal environment, in your external environment. You now are releasing a response to Satan that he has no answer to. Yeah, well, he does have an answer. If you hit Satan with enough scripture, he gonna flee. If you release enough scripture at Satan's attacks and command his attacks to die and to be defeated in Jesus' name, in the process of time, Satan's gonna flee. Remember the hammer? You might have to hammer that thing 10 times until you get so good that you can hammer it three times. Because Jesus, when you read Matthew 4, 4, you look at that whole experience, that whole interaction. Satan came at him three times. Jesus came back at him three times and Satan flee. Yeah, I like that. I'm working to get Satan to flee after three rebukes. I'm working to after I pray for something that I give God praise, and within three days, three weeks, whatever the situation is, because every situation has its own, you know, its own timeline, but I'm expecting God to accelerate it. I'm expecting God to work some things out so that 
it accelerates. So whether it's a doctor's visit, whether it's a, a, a visit to the mechanic, if I take my, my vehicle to the mechanic and they say, oh, uh, it's going to take four hours, I'm believing that it'll be done in two. And I can get the vehicles. I can keep on doing things for God. You know what I mean? That's just an analogy. It's not the best, but you understand what I'm saying? Whatever your whatever situation you're facing, when you tap into the accelerating power of God, when your environment internally and externally has more of the things of God you can recognize, those are accelerants. When you begin to now change your environment, that is proof that you've changed your reality. And when you start changing your reality, and it starts, your reality starts lining up with the, with the commands of God and the promises of God and the instructions of God, get ready for acceleration. I'm just going to tell you right now, get ready for acceleration because you've been chosen by God. God decided, I want you. Now, once we recognize that, now we say, okay, God, teach me, train me, build me up. Now, oh, 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 oh. all right, take off. It's time to get ready. <laughs> okay, it's time to it's time to flow. It's time to it's time to to operate for God like never before. It's time to operate and 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 take our realities in life and allow God to accelerate their promises in our lives. And then we just respond with willingness and obedience. We respond with gratitude and gratefulness. We respond with prayer and praise. And the most important of all, we respond with loving God. Oh, sweet Jesus. All right. So now let's talk about, excuse me. Let's talk about, um, okay. Uh, let's talk about acceleration. Let's, let's define the word accelerate. Y'all know I'm a big, I'm big on defining words and stuff like that. And so I want to, I want to really real quick, look at accelerating. All right, what it means to accelerate from God's standpoint and for the glory of God. Now, the word accelerate basically means this, and we're going to tie it into God. Accelerate means of a vehicle or other physical object, okay, beginning to move more quickly. And I know, I know you already knew that. I know you already knew what accelerate means. You know, to move more quickly, to speed up. Second, to increase in amount or extent. Oh, sweet Jesus. God's going to increase your amount, your effectiveness in any area you put your hands to. And God's going to increase your impact. Golly. Hey, you got to start expecting that. We're going to deal with expectation. You got to start expecting God to accelerate. Pick something that you need God to do. Pick something that you need God to help you with, to help you do. Pick, pick something that you need fixed. Pick something that Satan has come in and created problems that you need God to come in and fix it. But fix it in an accelerated format. Because you got the authority by God to, to get it accelerated. All right, you don't believe me? You don't believe God's got that, got that kind of power? You know, when 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 Jesus fed the 5,000, they, they only had like, they had they had two pieces of fish and, and they had five loaves of bread, little itty bitty, you know what I mean? Like sandwich loaves. And you don't, don't, don't think like them great big loaves that you get from, you know what I mean, Stop and Shop, Big Y, if you if you're in, or Pickly Wiggly, or you know what I mean, wherever you at. With your grocery store, they, they got the bakery in there and them great big old, no. Nah. Jesus started off with a little boy's lunch, but he prayed to the Father, to the Holy Spirit. And he caused that little boy's lunch to accelerate to the degree that it fed 5,000 men, not including women and children. So it's safe to say that on that, that one miracle, 
the accelerating power of God to multiply those loaves and fish fed easily eight to 10,000 people. If God can do that, then God can do that for you if there's a need. Now, hold on now. There was a need. If these these people was out there in the, in the in the they was out there in the hot sun, out there, you know what I mean, in the in the wilderness, wherever they was at, and and they they didn't have listen they didn't they didn't have stores around like we got stores like almost on every block. No, there was nothing. They couldn't get nothing to eat, and Jesus didn't want to send them away hungry, so he was like, "All right, this is an opportunity. This is a legitimate reason." to release the accelerating power of God, to meet a need, to fix a problem, to solve a problem. And God is saying, in your life, in your situation, you are about to learn how to get the accelerating power of God to speed up victory in your situation, to speed up your impact in your situation. That's some good news. Hold on. All right. Three seconds. Father, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. We're talking about reality change. We're talking about changing your reality with the faith of God, the expectation of God, and the accelerating power of God. And changing your reality to align with God's promises. Let's read some more. Let's read some more. Look at this here. We're talking about now third definition of acceleration. Now, this is in physics. Okay. In physics, to undergo change in velocity. Physics meaning in your physical situation. Change in velocity. Or in other words, whatever you're believing God to do, God says, if you add some accelerants to your situation, some spiritual accelerants to your situation, God is saying, we can move faster. Your divinity says, I can move faster in any situation if I get the right accelerants. Now, for those of you that say, well, okay, well, what do you mean accelerants? All right, let me let me give you this analogy. So if you take a fire, right? You take a fire, it's already lit and burning. You throw gasoline on that fire, that whole fire is going to accelerate. And then, and then, not only is that fire going to accelerate, but it's going to burn more quicker. Faster. The accelerants of God that we're about to look at, and there's some simple ones. Oh, my God, I'm not going to give you all of them, but I'm going to give you the main ones to accelerate God's ability, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit's ability to change your current reality and cause your current reality to line up with the promises that God has made. Oh, Satan's not going to be happy on that one. Oh, my God, he's going to have his day wrecked dealing with you oh oh my god hallelujah because you're just getting better and better because your connection is stronger in god and now you're adding more accelerant in your relationship with god just start expecting things to start changing that you praying for changing that you commanding in the name of jesus to change now god starts working in your circumstances physically, in your circumstances with people, all of a sudden folks that was giving you a hard time, God can touch their heart or touch somebody's heart to literally make your reality better. Now, okay, back to the, the screw in the tire. So I took it to the people. Now, there's, there's some specific people that I deal with that, you know what I mean, they they take care of a fellow, you know, because they know they know I love God and, you know what I mean, you know, so on and so forth. But I went and dealt with the wrong person. And he rushed the thing and it got into the system. So my guy says, there's nothing I can do now. It's, you know, it's, it's in the system. So I had to eat that one. You know why? Because I thought to talk to my guy. But I just went in because I wanted to get it done. I was rushing too much. And I just dealt with one of the guys. And he put the deal in, the transaction in, and made it 
and send it to completion. I didn't even have the money to pay for it right then because you know, I always do that at the end. It got messed up. I had to eat that one. But I could have potentially walked away with a near free tire. What's that got to do with acceleration and promises and reality change? When the Holy Spirit starts leading you to do it their way or his way, when God leads you to do it their way, when the Holy Spirit specifically leads you to do it his way, put a thought in you, if you do it another way, you're going to create a scenario that God is like, okay, look, I'm going to bless you. But we, we, this one is done. We got to do it God's way. You, you, you got to make changes for God. I got to make changes for God. And there are some accelerants that will help you to make changes and enjoy them. Prayer is one of those accelerants. Praise is one of those accelerants. Obedience is one of those accelerants. Working for God is another accelerant. You say, what do you mean accelerant? It's another thing that causes God to move swiftly in your situation. When you start rebuking Satan, that is actually an accelerant that causes God the, to have the ability to respond to your faith, to respond to your expectation so that they can move swiftly to get Satan fleeing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now, talking about acceleration, when accelerate, definition number four, to move faster, listen to this next one, and to gain speed. So in other words, when it comes to the things of God, when you and I begin to allow the accelerants that God showed us to use through Jesus' example, when we add the things that Jesus did into our current reality, the Father and the Holy Spirit can accelerate the prayers that we're praying. Listen, anything can be sped up. Anything can be sped up. Anything can be slowed down. When you find the promise of God and you pray and you worship God and thank God for doing it and promise God, I will use this for your glory, whether it's a promotion at, God, at your job, whether it's, whether it's a new this or that, Anything that you do in word or deed, when you do it in the name of Jesus, when you promise God, I will use this as a tool to witness, God says, what do you want? And then when you start putting that prayer and praise on it, that, that willingness and obedience to God, that boldness, that working for God, God's going to accelerate whatever you desire. That's based on the promises of God. That's going to change your reality and make things better. Make your praise more, make your worship more, make you witness more. All right, let's move on. Look at this here. To move faster, to gain speed. That's what God is teaching you, teaching us to do. How to move faster, to get prayers answered faster, to get stronger, to get wiser. Oh, sweet Jesus. And then the last definition. Oh, oh, I love this here. The last definition of acceleration is to progress from grade to grade more rapidly than usual. In other words, now, now that's what the definition is from the Webster's, but, but spiritually, see, every attack that the enemy is allowed to attack you, with, attack you at or attack you with, it's kind of like the, the definition says grade to grade, but, but, but spiritually it's from level to level to level, to, to, let me not block my face, level to level. So when you're at, and I'm going to make this real simple, when you're at level one, I shared this uh, last week, when you're at level one and you've learned everything that goes on at level one, Satan can't attack you at level two type attacks until 
you've conquered him and defeated him and wrecked his environment at level one. So the level one attacks against your life, God says, you'll stay at level one until you defeat him. Now, if, if you're not getting the right information, you'll stay at level one until you die, spiritually. Until you die physically, but you'll spiritually stay at level one. That's not fun at all. You want to grow through those levels. But to grow through those levels, when you defeat several, Satan at level one, then God begins to reveal to you the strategies, the abilities, the possibilities at level two. But now God's not going to come in and say, okay, now you're at level two. No, when you conquer the things that Satan has used against you at level one, and you got those conquered, and you got those under control, now you start believing God for more, you start growing more, then God starts talking to you about stuff at level two. Now, at level two, God starts giving you instructions, giving you abilities at level two. Now, Satan can come and attack you at level two. But he can't attack you at level three. He can't put level three tactics on you, attacks on you, because you haven't learned how to defeat him at level three. You can only now, you can only now expect Satan to attack you at level two. So the thing that you're at, dealing with right now, whatever level you're at right now, okay, you are prepared to defeat it. And you are prepared to accelerate the power of God in your life to defeat it. So now let's let's talk about some of these accelerants. Okay. Let's talk about some of these accelerants that that cause and 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 get you to where your performance and your victory over Satan's attacks your performance, and your receiving the blessings of God. Accelerate. Let's look at some accelerators, and I'm going to close with this here. Stick with me. Some, accelerate, some accelerators that you want to you promote, and I said them earlier, but watch this here. Studying your Bible, reading your Bible, and, and, and getting the knowledge of God. Faith. Developing your confidence and your conviction and your persuasion in God, knowing that God will perform their word. Talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Obedience. You know, it's saying yes to God and saying no to Satan. Saying no to the things that Satan is using to try to stop you and block you and slow you down. Praising God. Whew. Learning all of those praises. There's nine of them. And going through all of, all of those praise expressions. It strengthens you. It paralyzes Satan. It, it activates God because you're believing God's word and you're taking God at his word. You, you, when you take God at their word before your physical reality changes, do you understand the size of the faith that you're releasing in God? That's humongous faith. And Satan wants to come and get you to doubt so he can slow down and decelerate the reality change that God has promised you. And then worship. I mean, just loving on God. Just, just looking at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And just, just tell him how much you love him. How much you appreciate him. How much you appreciate what they've done in your life. What you have allowed and grown to in your faith and your knowledge of God's ability. You've released that kind of faith and that kind of knowledge, and 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 you are, your your reality is better. Oh, this is good. This is good. Works of righteousness. Doing stuff because you know God said do it, and God sees that as works of righteousness. Going to church, telling people, you know what I mean, doing good to people, letting them know why you're doing good. Witnessing, telling people about God, how to get connected to God. Financial worship, paying your tithes, giving offerings. These are all accelerators. These are accelerants. Loving God, sharing your love for God, telling people why you love God. Oh, sweet Jesus. We're going to master these things. We're going to deal with these things, and we're going to deal with the, the things that, that, that give us clues and how 
to pray, how to worship, how to give God praise, how to walk in righteousness. Because when God says, I'll accelerate your reality change, I'm like this here. God, show me how to do it and show me what to do. And then give me the strength to do it. Oh, hallelujah. And when God starts changing your reality, when God starts answering your prayers, when you now start getting prayer after prayer after prayer answered, that's setting you up so that when people see you blessed and they see miracles and answers to prayer, they're going to come wondering, why are you so blessed? And that's going to be your opportunity to witness and tell them, I have overcome by the blood of the lamb, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. Well, my time is all gone. Oh, this has been good. Listen, okay. I just want to say this here. We have not been in this series in a minute. It is just great to be back, and it's great to come back talking about acceleration. Well, I just want to just encourage you to allow God to continue to accelerate in your life, to continue to 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 teach you and, and build you up and, and, and help you to get your light shining for the glory of God. Now, do this here for me. Go to the description box. Listen, if you want to be a blessing, be a blessing to the ministry. Those of you, hallelujah, that God has blessed you so much. Listen, the description box will tell you how you can pay your tithes, give an offering, so on and so forth. And then also tell a friend, let them know, look, you need to get on to this here because you need to know how to accelerate the power of God to change reality for and into the word of God and for the glory of God. And then lastly, glory to God, listen, listen to this. I'm telling you, you need to listen to this message at least three or four times before you go and listen to another one. And uh, you can listen to it while you're commuting to work. You can listen to it while you're recreating. Whatever you're doing, just listen to this word. Get these principles and get these formulas in you so that God can accelerate you to the reality change that you're praying about and praying for. And then in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send this message to a friend. Let them know, send this message to a family member. Let them know that God is in the accelerating business of changing realities. Well, again, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. May God bless you and keep you. Shalom. Yeah.